Hello again, and welcome back to the video series discussing this book, Investigating the Psychological World, Scientific Method in the Behavioral Sciences by Brian D. Haig. We are running a little bit behind schedule, which means that uh, my students in the, in the class are now ahead of me, ahead of these pre uh, presentations. But that's okay. Uh, hopefully, I'll catch up with them soon. I also decided to stop using the PowerPoint style of presentation in these videos, uh, largely because of a conversation I had with a friend who convinced me that when we use those uh, bullet points to summarize the content of a chapter, we are depriving the content, depriving the presentation from the process of thinking that results in those outcomes, results in that summary. And uh, even if the process of thinking is shared, it is not emphasized enough because too much emphasis is placed on the bullet points. So I'm going to try to uh, not rely on the slides and aim to share the process of, of thinking and the process of reading, uh, reading the book and thinking with the book. Now uh, to chapter three. We are going to discuss the first half of chapter three. And chapter three is, is titled Theory Generation, Exploratory Factor Analysis. We should address a possible elephant in the room. Some of the readers, including the students in my class, might feel surprised and maybe even disoriented when they reach this chapter because after reading a little bit about methodology, the study of method, the importance of the study of method, and a little bit of philosophy of science, suddenly we enter into a discussion of, apparently, a discussion of statistics. How does this fit with the previous discussions about deductive reasoning, scientific realism? How is exploratory factor analysis related to uh, those previous topics? Then we should answer that question by the end of this uh, by the end of this chapter. Let me begin with a quote from page sixty nine. This quote here, uh, in the beginning of section three point two point four, we read quote: "It is sometimes said that the central idea in factor analysis is that the relation between the relations." between a large number of observed variables are the direct result of a smaller number of latent variables. So we have a set of observed variables. Let's say we have a survey or a set of measurements, a survey consisting of 100 items, and we give that 100 items to a large group of 1,000 people. And we find that among these observed variables are relationships. And indeed, these observed variables are grouped together in bundles, and each bundle consists of variables that together correlate with each other. So from that observation that these uh, observed variables are related to each other and constitute these bundles, and the bundles are independent of each other, but within each bundle we have uh, related variables, related observed variables. If we go from that observation to the postulation, to the claim that there are latent variables, there are variables hiding beneath the observed variables, and they are causing these relationships. Now, this is related to scientific realism, because when we adopt the position of scientific realism, we say that we are interested in not just what is immediately and directly observable. We are also interested in unobservable, not just unobservable entities and processes we cannot observe at the moment because of not having the right technology, but also we are interested in and we, we, are, we are willing to take into account concepts that help both make sense of our observations, simplify our observations, uh, and organize uh, what is observable in uh, in terms of in terms of those concepts. 
So that's the realist position. That is different from empiricism. Empiricism limits us to what is directly and immediately observable. And even though it is common nowadays for psychologists to self-describe, to describe themselves as, I'm an empiricist or I'm, I'm an empirically minded psychologist. That just means that they, they are taking data, they are taking uh, evidence seriously. It doesn't mean that they are empiricists technically, uh, because they, they would also take theoretical concepts and non-observed non uh, entities and processes uh, into account. So the position we adopt is uh, a realist position, which opens up the possibility for us to posit these latent variables that we don't directly observe. But uh, we posit them as responsible for the pattern uh, we observe in the data. That move also move from observed pattern to unobserved variables, unobserved causes. That's a move that we can describe as backward reasoning, backward or diagnostic reasoning, which is something described in this book, The Knowledge Illusion. I'll make another re uh, reference to this in a minute. And we can also describe it as abductive reasoning. Abductive reasoning in the, in the form described, uh, formulated by Peirce, Charles Sanders Peirce. Surprising fact, a surprising fact is observed, but if an assumption, a given assumption is true, then this surprising fact would be a matter of course. Hence, there is reason to suspect that this uh, assumption, this theoretical position is true, or at least worth further consideration. So going from uh, apparent consequences, apparent results, to the hidden causes, this, uh, and it is abductive, abductive reasoning. Now, is this uniquely tied to factor analysis, exploratory factor analysis? Uh, I don't think so. Exploratory factor analysis is one way to, and uh, this is consistent with the content of this chapter, because in the beginning of the chapter we read that um, exploratory factor analysis is a method designed to facilitate. So it is possible to claim to argue in favor of these latent, latent variables or latent causes, to diagnose latent causes without factor analysis, but it is, this is one way in which we can, uh, our, our reasoning is facilitated. We will, this is another book that I am planning to discuss in, in the future, in the near future, hopefully. In this book, we also will hear about abductive reasoning, and we read that abductive reasoning can, can apply, can be applied to case studies, to observations of a single case not necessarily involving aggregate data and not necessarily involving factor analysis. One example of factor analysis, there are many examples of, uh, of factor uh, analytic reasoning that mm, claim the existence of a cause that, ex that helps us explain patterns of data uh, in, a, in a variety of settings. One of them is a factor, is a hidden yeah, latent variable that uh, was proposed by Shane Frederick. And this is another reference to this book, The Knowledge Illusion. So Shane Frederick designed a, a simple test called the Cognitive Reflectiveness Test that is based on people's answer to three questions. And now those three questions are related to so many other observations. Let me find this place to, to read from. So for instance, this is a quote from page 83 of the Knowledge Illusion. For instance, they, meaning the people who score higher on the reflective, cognitive reflectiveness test, 
They are better at detecting when a statement was intended to be profound or whether it is essentially a random collection of words, like basically uh, bullshit. They are, uh, so they're better at detecting bullshit. They are also more willing to take risks and they are less impulsive. In general, they are more likely to take a chance or to, or to wait longer if it means getting a bigger reward. Their preferences differ in other ways as well. More reflective people are more likely than less reflective people to prefer dark chocolate to milk chocolate. They are also less likely to believe in God. Now we can criticize those, uh, some of those findings, the interpretation of those findings in a different context. The point here is that we have many different observations uh, across different varieties of assessments and religious beliefs, dark preference for dark chocolate, preference for advertisements, for example. But we can explain them, we can account variability, individual variability, with reference to one latent variable, namely um, the degree to which a person is uh, inclined towards reflective cognition. Okay, maybe one last note. Um, exploratory uh, factor analysis, or maybe more generally, correlation between two variables, uh, doesn't mean that they are both caused by the same underlying factor. It doesn't mean that they necessarily have a common cause. It just means that it is possible for them to have a common cause. And whether or not we proceed to accepting and further examining, taking seriously the idea that they have a common cause to correlated items, to correlated variables, whether or not they have a common cause, depends on a lot of other surrounding assumptions, relevant as assumptions and prior knowledge uh, about those uh, observations, those variables and topic of study. One of those related uh, assumptions, something that might influence the idea of a common cause, is whether A and B uh, remain correlated with each other if that supposed cause uh, is absent. If the supposed cause is absent and the two variables are not correlated with each other anymore, and only in the presence of that cause, supposed cause, the correlation emerges between two variables, then we have more reason to be suspicious about uh, A and B having a common cause. So none of these... Uh, None of these methods based on exploratory factor analysis necessitates uh, accepting uh, latent variables as common cause of uh, variables within a factor. It just opens us uh, towards considering and accepting them, just like scientific realism as a general background assumption and uh, conscious application of abductive reasoning, which goes from observed patterns of in the data to postulating latent variables, existence of latent variables that are real, real things. I think that is good. There is a lot more detail and there, there are a lot more distinctions in, in this chapter, in the first half of the, the third chapter. I think what I covered is good for our purpose and we will continue uh, from section 3.3 .3 in the next video. Thank you for listening.